Hi everybody! Welcome to another Table 13. Today, we are discussing magic items. Different kinds, making them, ruining your games with them, <laughs> ruining your players' relationships with them. Uh, you know, just in general. The, 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 the good rounded conversation. Um, this is actually going to be something that I am not nearly as... Uh, um, I don't have nearly as well good of expertise as I do with like the story structure and the like uh, um, world building stuff. I am not nearly as knowledgeable about building magic items as the two boys above me here. Um, they are much much more experienced in this kind of thing. But I, uh, you know, I'm still really interested to know and learn myself here. So tell me. If I were to sit down and to build a magic item for the first time, what would be something that I would really want to avoid immediately? Like, first first pitfall. Well, what do you guys think? I think something that... I, try, I tend to, like, not try to give my, my characters things that make them better in a field that they already are better than the rest of the party in. Okay. If that makes a sense. Either I want to try and help them fill up something that they're bad at or help them do more, like a wider array of things instead of like a deeper array of things, okay. I suppose. I would probably say something similar. Yeah, the big thing that I try, I would try and avoid is... Um, uh, putting putting players in a yeah like in a position where they're better at um, yeah like significantly head and shoulders better than the rest of the party at doing um, you know whatever uh, it is that they're trying to do I do I do think that you can get away with um, giving certain people a head uh, or you know leg up over uh other party members that's at what their class is supposed to be good at right um like a certain amount but you just yeah you don't want to give the paladin too many more melee combat abilities or whatever it doesn't you know they don't need that to be like uh, uh like combat or uh, effective or whatever um and uh and another thing i think you can do sometimes is uh it, it's sort of like what i was uh talking about with homebrewing uh, in general, is is ste uh, stepping on the toes of other classes. Like if you allow mm -hmm. one player to now um, serve the purpose that another uh, player had as well or better um, when they were, you know, you know, when that was like sort of the other character's place to shine or something, that can cause bad feelings as well. Right. Um, but these are all <laughs> very, you know, fancy ways of saying, you know, don't give them stuff that's mechanically, you know too powerful i guess right don't, right don't give the bard the ability to not take any damage from anything <laughs> what i don't i don't understand what what is that in reference to is that well, i have uh, no idea i don't I, honestly don't give what, anyone that just, what, just, what just kind of dm would with, like do a that? really really poor oh, choice goodness. right <laughs> wow jesus i wonder how he's gonna get out of that one he or she who knows which whoever gender, you know, that, DM that, that, that DM. might happen to be right. <laughs> so I runs our podcast Dragons made of Fairland. some interesting <laughs> decisions regarding no magic but items. that's I would I would I would agree with Eric um like you don't want to make your paladin a better rogue than the rogue is you know that's probably the biggest thing really because that rogue what makes them special and what makes them feel like they're an asset to the party is the fact that they can sneak around and pick locks and, and do a bunch of stealth damage or whatever, right. you know, and right. taking that away from them and giving the first place trophy to a druid doesn't, you know, it, it's going to piss that person off. Right. Right. Especially if that character can also like, you know, serve as the tank when they need to, or, you know, they can sneak into a building when they need to, or they can, you know, it's like, yeah. So but if there's, that's I, I sort of a problem across like... the board the going more fundamental would be there are some things that i think that you should steer away from regardless of the class you know mechanic, like mechanics mechanics wise, wise that you just don't want to do and and the bringing up the invincible tilly bard is a good example because i think that that is unless you're really really you have very high faith in your party and your role players and yourself as a dm to make sure that it doesn't like destroy your game um you're you know you're it's it's going to be 
uh, dangerous to use. You're going to end up hurting feelings or just destroying the story that you've you've tried to construct. Um, so uh, besides invincibility, what's something else that you guys would suggest um, you stay away from? I think you got to watch. Actions. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, like definitely action, action economy, economy stuff <clears throat> or spell slots. Those there are okay. certain things in D anD D and and probably other games as well. Um, you know, I'm trying to not stay. You know, I'm trying to stay as system agnostic as possible. Right. But there are certain things within these game systems that are meant to be like fail safes. Like, you know, these things are limited quantity resources that every right. party has to manage, every player has to manage. Blah blah blah. And giving them more of that absolutely pulls the the uh, you know the the difficulty way out of proportion. You right. know, and and now you. Instead of throwing CR ones at the party, you have to throw CR sixes at the party, and right. eventually you're just home brewing fucking chainsaw machine guns, <laughs> you know, to try yeah. and combat the party's ridiculousness. Which is, which is fine, but it's a lot more work on your end. To, yeah, right. that's like I guess the there's no like you like yeah like Iron will say, it's there's there's nothing wrong with fighting broken with more broken. Uh, it's just you've got to devise that system and then keep all those now like wonky plates spinning throughout the whole thing. Right. So that, like, you know, I find personally the more I can avoid uh, that, the less, uh, you know, like work it, <laughs> I feel right. like I'm doing. But uh, but it's but I'm doing I'm just doing a lot more on the front end sometimes to like, OK, yeah, what's this fucking 16 page document of various like things that are like okay i'm only going to use half of them or something right um so it's everybody's got their method for that but i I, yeah another thing like like bags is saying in the chat here i think uh you um you can get yourself in trouble with the bonuses to attack Mm -hmm. uh um because that's a big one especially 5e that's um to get like specific on on mechanic stuff there the way the bounded accuracy system works um it's static bonuses are pretty few and far between right um and getting yeah getting uh those uh especially early on or you know like yeah if they progress too early um it's usually like level five is where plus one stuff happens um 10 ish is usually two uh and then generally i don't like put threes in until 15 or so which means they don't usually show up in my games. right yeah. most of my games don't last to that long generally but when you start at one and yeah i'd like you know right. it's, so that's the other side of it too is i i, I think yeah it, you want to stay away from big bonus uh like bonuses to attack either yeah especially 5e that the bounded accuracy system can get broken real quick if you uh if they're adding plus 10 to their attack at level five oh, yeah. or something that would be nuts i mean crazy so yeah yeah i guess like going further into D um i suppose like uh so you want to avoid making like one uh, player better in their class than another class like stepping on the toes of another class you know giving the the making the druid sneakier stuff um but then there's like the kind of a problem of um if you're passing out magical items uh that you've homebrewed or otherwise and you want it to be like random you know like there are a lot of loot tables and stuff like that uh even if you haven't homebrewed the item sometimes the druid can wind up with an item that makes them if not better than the rogue at least closer to the rogue's abilities or or something of the like um how do you guys suggest that someone playing 5e handles that if they're going to choose to do a loot table because i know that you guys would probably like try to dissuade from using a loot table if i if i don't i know yeah i think i lost a bit of that but um um, yeah, you were all over the toward place. The end. Uh, it was chopping up a little bit. Oh, so, you, but you were saying like uh, basically like the argument, or like how you would manage uh, dealing with the random loot that pops up from right. uh, the loot tables and yeah, uh, and and sort of how that might. And then I kind of double back and said, if 
if you would use loot tables because I know that you guys would yeah. probably not want to use loot tables. I was going to say, that's my easy, uh, right. well, quote unquote, easy way to s solve that problem. I would say don't. But at the end of the day, <laughs> though, it is um, because, yeah, you did that happen. Oh, man. <laughs> they're already, ah, see, there we go. They're already pre-created items that are in the book. If you make all your items and fill up your own well, tables and then roll on them, sure. fine. But, <laughs> right. I mean, but it's also, I mean, they've also made hundreds of magical items yeah, for you. Hundreds. And these tables that you can, like, sit down and, and, and every once in a while score a really Maybe big a like, awesome hundred. magical item. But and see, then, this is, and then this accidentally is... give your level five druid a staff of the woodlands, um, and make him god. Basically, he was already to... oh, running no, around it was awakening actually everything. One hundred, yeah. No. <laughs> but yeah, so no, that's, that. I mean, whether you get homebrew or not in the table, like whether you use DM, there's still that chance of like someone ending up with a magical item, or even, or even like someone ending up like the fighter ending up with a great sword. And the bard ending up also with a great sword. You know, like, they're not going to benefit from those magical items the same way. So, so I, I, yeah. I don't put items in the game randomly, I guess, you know? Like, they're not going to happen to show up. Like, it's, you know, like, they're, they're I guess, as the DM, I get to decide if that is, like, a, a special right. sword or not. Or, you know, is, or uh, if that armor is magical or not. Um, and so I try and have that figured out. Like, it's like, okay, here's where they are. I need to make sure that they've got like a loot situation set up at some point. I try and like make sure that that's, um, available if it's on the, the guy that they're fighting right now, or if it's in, you know, the secret stash room of, you know, whatever room they're sneaking through or something like that. Um, they, they stumble across it, but I, you know, I, I, I pick those items and say, mm -hmm. okay, this is probably going to be something that, you know, this player will like. This is probably something that this player will like, and this will be something that will clearly fit this player pretty well. Um, and if I'm not doing that, then occasionally I'll throw some random stuff in, but usually it's I, I, I try and make sure that I've, like, okay, consciously and intentionally put right. uh, items in, I guess. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> like, that seems, yeah, <laughs> lawful as fuck. Um, but yeah. I'm, I'm so, quite the opposite. Okay. When they, I'll, I'll throw them a bone every once in a while when they're out and they they like pay special attention to a sword at a merchant or or whatever. But oh, yeah. Normally, magic items and stuff are going to come from BBGs. Um, you know, like uh, in, in a game I was running for a while, uh, the Free Winter Company. They fought a um, dude who was basically making a bunch of either infused zombie things. And he ran a, a airship manufacturing company, and they went into his underground lair and fucked him up. And and I rolled a bunch of shit on tables, and it was just stuff because it wouldn't, you know, he didn't collect things that would work specifically for those four players, you know, or five players, right. or six players. He collected a bunch of shit, and then it's kind of interesting to dole it, see him dole it out, and like what are they, who's going to use what, you know, and some things may work better for some people than others. But that's how it would be, I suppose, you know. Um, maybe it's a little bit less, like, pandered to the players. No, but it yeah, is a little I... bit more realistic, I guess. Um, and then the druid ended up with the staff of the woodland. And awakened <laughs> every goddamn thing he walked across. <laughs> Oh, he's here! Oh, yeah. He's yeah, here! Bro. He's right there, uh, yeah. I just want to go ahead and say thank you to Rogue for this lovely flag. As you may have <laughs> noticed, we've uh, I've switched it. And uh, is a, a glorious Union Jack, which I think I hung right side up. <laughs> Eric, you need to set a P.O. box so that people who want to send you flags <laughs> yeah. to show in the background. I'm pretty excited <laughs> about that prospect. So, <laughs> you know. Send you a flag. Not in, well, only reasonably intentionally explicit flag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, but yeah, so so going back to magical items, that flag is magical. Um, but yeah, no, so um, that I kind of try to stride the line between the two. I will do like in Dragon's Paralandia where a NPC comes by and says, I have gifts for each party member. And it's a very easy way of like, this is yours. This is yours. You know, there is no, um, there, there's no muddledness over who gets what 
but I have also done tables. And uh, sometimes that does, you know, land you into some kind of like maybe disappointing spots where you don't get a lot of stuff or maybe like, oh, Jesus, what did I just roll? That's going to be very powerful or two people might want that or something and it's going to cause conflict. Um, it, it is interesting, like magic items, especially in 5e, are like a resource that is, uh, you know, a little bit different than gold in terms of like 10 gold in the fighter's pocket is going to be 10 gold in anyone else's pocket. But the plus three, you know, sort of sharpness is going to be, um, you know, more important in a in someone who is a combat class than a magic class and vice versa. I mean, there's some magic items that can only be used by certain classes, too. Um, yeah. And in like spell casting specific, you know. Right. The, yeah. Um, whatever it is. Exactly. Yeah, or, or not pact of the, but the rod of the something or other pact keeper or something like that whatever it is but it's like a warlock rod basically or um but there and so that yeah there there are items that work that way and that's why i try to just say i'm not gonna end up using that for the most part i mean i'll throw in random crap from time to time and like they'll happen to have a weapon that's like fancy but more often i'll just throw in a weapon that's like oh that's worth 10 times its base value because it's really gaudy and it's a ceremonial weapon or something right uh, that they can then sell and turn into money and, uh, you know, go get what they want with it. Sort of they right. give them a gift card concept. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. And I have a lot of times when the homebrewing of magic items has really gotten me in trouble in a campaign for, I mean, since I began being a DM, magic items have caused, has, has caused me trouble. And, uh, you know, from one penny Lenny and his fucking sword or his gun. Okay. All right. Now that's not fair. All no. Right. No. That was a great story. It, no. <laughs> no. But yeah. So you know, the the not only that, but the, like the items that I made, like the MacGuffins that I made, like the gun of the wind that took whatever was behind you and turned into a bludgeoning weapon in front of you, um, because it you know blew whatever was behind you in front of you. Yeah, you could he he could fold ships in half by standing in the middle of them and firing down the back because he would take the back half of, or the front half of the ship and slam it into the back half of the ship. Yeah, um, and but we had a lot of fun, you know, and we had yeah, it was, was a that was a game where we were we were basically gods. I mean, we were extremely freaking powerful, you yeah. know. Yeah, and it was saying we were launching magic people items from one ship guys. into the other ship as cannonballs, like yep. out of a yeah. out of the chrysopult. Yeah, chrysopult. <laughs> so that's yeah. where like my uh, habit of handing very powerful magic items to players just be like, "What you gonna do with it? You know, do do something with it." Um, whereas you guys, especially Mister E, plays it way safer with that kind of thing. Um. But yeah, so I, I, I guess like that, that long ramble, um, I, it, this is a, kind of one of those things. I, I don't have a lot of experience with, with magic items. And all I can say is sit here and say is that, you know, oh, I've been, been in trouble with them. But, you know, you guys are the ones that are supposed to be, you know, oh. leading this, uh, this discussion. Oh. I mean, Mystery, you have an entire system, right, of some kind to set up for magic items. I've heard um, tell. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I do. But uh, well, I'm a, the bags was just saying here in, uh, in in the chat that I would give someone a plus one long sword and they'd be like, I'm not proficient. I use short swords and it'd become a three session art. <laughs> no, nah, I wouldn't. No, he would totally like, do I'd that. give him a short sword <laughs> like because their character needs a short sword. <laughs> like, I'd be like, oh, or some other dex based weapon or be like, oh, hey, here's a finesse spear. Or something fucking goofy, like you know. But no, that's I. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I I try and yeah, I don't know. That's I I think I try and uh, work out some sort of system which gets everybody moving up sort of at the same uh, pace, um, which is is uh, tough to do with magic items, especially in five e. Um, so in a lot of my games in five e, they just there aren't a lot of magic items that show up. Because you don't desperately need them. Like, uh, people are still really good and functional without them. But, well, uh, because as, as people point out all the time, you know, there's, 
the system is is balanced around not using magic items, you know, right. the amount of right. accuracy and the blah 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 blah. blah. Um, it's you know it, those magic items are extra things, and I think what you do and what you you know try to accomplish with how you give out magic items is that you don't like accidentally overpower one person and then not the rest. You know, you try to play it safe yeah. and keep everybody sort of the same level. Everybody's um, got to which is safe. The same step over, but yeah, it takes more work on the front end uh, as a general rule. Though, though, again, I'm going to say it depends on the table. There are a certain kind of trope, trope game, that if you have a really good party, you can pull off. And I mean, I haven't. I've tried it once or twice, but I mean, the games have fizzled for various reasons, not because of this, but it's the Frodo trope. Where you give one character a really powerful item that's like also really bad for them, and then the rest of the party is kind of there as a Fellowship of the Rings kind of situation. Um, but that requires a little bit more organization and communication between the role players than otherwise, because that does kind of put right. one character into a special position. But again, you know, I've had um party or like tables where we've sat down and been like okay they're the main character of this kind of story and then we're gonna play like their friends and family or something like that so you you can get away uh, with giving you know one character a a super sword and then letting the rest of them pull uh pull support no i think if everybody agrees on it beforehand (laughs) and everybody understands that that's the premise um that you know you can make any concept work for a game uh if if everybody's on board so i definitely agree with that yeah you can totally do like a frodo or something like that kind of thing type of what type of magic items do you typically give out to your players eric like um so i personally tend to try and stay away from combat based ones as much as i can like usually i agree uh, yeah like wondrous items are like my bread and butter okay I will, um, so I'm trying to think, uh, I've got, uh, my Sunday game. I'm starting to get them into their plus one weapons, uh, now, but, um, I try to do things that are maybe not quite magic, um, necessarily, but are other things that help their character, you know, kind of fill out like the, the, um, concept that they're working toward i guess like there's one of a one of my characters does have a a bow that's like effectively a plus one bow um but like the other one i think i uh worked with him to get this like kind of trench coat suit of chain mail thing that he really enjoyed the concept of and like he spent a ton of his money on shirts and like they're i don't know like so (laughs) I guess like that's all like less specific magic item stuff, but like I, I try and give like figure out what the players are trying to do with their character, um, and and throw, yeah, like like uh, Icky was is saying there is like, you know something RP or flavor based to try and get, um, get <laughs> them something and that's <laughs> uh, pain. He gets bigger hey, every this time. This is my dog. He's enormous. He's huge. He's, he's gonna outweigh me seen him in though. like a week. He's he's almost a hundred pounds now. Jesus uh, Christ! So much puppy. Arf. But uh, <laughs> like I was saying, so uh, <laughs> Arf. so so I try and stay away from like raw bonuses to AC or raw bonuses to attack. Um, if I'm gonna go into anything that's combat related, I will. Uh, try and go for more obscure stuff like oh like here's a way to move more efficiently or here's a way to um like ignore uh this kind of difficult terrain or um uh, i don't know like your jump distance is increased or stuff stuff like that you can kind of um i think balance out uh the the or at least yeah like i've been saying sort of more incrementally move forward with the the bonuses that you give people and sort of like okay that's an issue like i've got to figure out a way to manage that or whatever like uh like giving giving rabbits uh fucking 10 foot vertical (laughs) yeah (laughs) or giving fairies the ability to just (coughs) that was a good good race to do yeah this kind of goes into like homebrewing races and two is like you don't want to make a racial ability to overpower like an entire class's ability. Oh, fuck. 
Um, There's a, don't even get me started on fucking race building. Race yeah. building well, is fun. That's an we entire new dug through the yeah. trenches on that shit. Yeah. That's <laughs> I enjoy that. Whole that. Other, oh, that's a whole other episode. Maybe that's next episode. That'd be a pretty good yeah, next episode, we'll right? Just building, doing races, but... Anyway, we have an hour whole, left to fill whole... here, so yeah, well, yeah that's true. <laughs> we could dig <laughs> into that. Um, we made a whole a whole fucking document that has probably twenty four different like choices um, of of just red wall inspired races that was a fucking pain in the ass to put together. <laughs> like at first, it was great, and then then we started like digging into what makes these types of animals similar to these types of animals what's special about what's different between badgers and fucking, <laughs> fucking trying to put them in families Holy. that was the most frustrating it was stupid we had them all built and they were trying to like okay like what are the like greater race groups and that was like almost as difficult as trying to differentiate the, fr- the oh my oh, god it was rough oh. it was rough it's uh, there they exist now yeah there's 21 yeah, they, of them yeah, I'm gonna steal the crap out of them too in a little bit. Yeah, yep. Um, they're fun. There are some really cool uh, bits here. There's also some probably pretty broken races in there too. Right, and that's what happens when you get too creative. Frankly, um, yeah. it uh, you, and and you won't know until you're in the thick of it and you <laughs> witness it happening and you yeah. watch your like yeah encounter fall apart. And uh, because of the rabbit's 20 foot vertical leap, yeah. Oh, well, no, just that made it take a whole session instead of like right. either he died or he got out. That was the two yeah. were like, it was like, okay, we can solve this here real quick. It was like, no, you can just like keep bouncing around. Yep, <laughs> yeah, that's but what I, did too. I figured out how I'm gonna handle that. It's gonna be some uh, oblivion rules. Uh, if, if you're high jumping, you don't, you still take fall damage. Oh, okay, <laughs> so so we can manage this, right. Um, I don't know. So yeah, do you want to like go into doing classes a little bit? Because I do have a few questions on that too. Uh, um, races or races? Yeah. Why don't we? Why don't we wait until the break? We'll just okay. Yeah. The break. Do so we want to just like through. come up with some ideas for magic items? <clears throat> um, uh, yeah. Sure. Here, let's kind of just yeah, do some here. brainstorming on it. All right. Yeah. I will. I will begin with uh, like a magic item that I find interesting and then you guys are going to tell me why it would totally break the game or why it's a good idea or how to how to balance this is it my favorite well. segment this is the segment yeah, right. where we give Karen shit for his terrible yeah. ideas yeah right let's, let's how do broken it. is this garbage no. yeah, yeah, i don't know what yeah, we're gonna call exactly. it but we gotta get something yeah. <laughs> enjoy that how terrible is this okay so um i have uh, a couple of magic items here um they are MacGuffins in a, in a campaign that is ongoing, so I won't tell you what exactly they are, but they're, they're worn items, and they provide certain bonuses when worn. Okay, so uh, the allows the wearer to cast Teleport, Divine Word, and Regenerate as actions. Is that I all? I up what these yeah. things are. <laughs> okay, I just yeah. want to make sure. <laughs> yep. I don't know what one, the one what like seventh level spell. Or yeah, they are. I think they're four to seventh level spells. Oh my god. Uh huh. <laughs> so so quite word, quite broken. I'll just just in case you guys don't know what these spells do. Divine word. You utter a divine word imbued with the power that shaped the world at the dawn of creation. Choose any number of creatures you can see within <laughs> range. Each creature you can hear or that can hear you must make a charisma saving throw. On a failed save, the creature suffers an effect based on its current hit points. It goes starts at fifty oh, hit points and goes down by ten hit points each time. Deafened for one minute, blinded and deafened for ten minutes, blind and blinded, deafened and stunned for an hour. Twenty hit points or lower, killed instantly, um, mm. and then. Basically, if it's a celestial on a fey or fiend, it just gets shoved back into their original plane. Oh, this is as an action at will, right, Kyron? <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> nope. There's no limit per day or, or right. rest no, either. Right. It's just whenever you want. Okay. To. Perfect. So that so you want got... to avoid. We'll just start. There. <laughs> <laughs> um. So we've got we've got divine word. What was the other one? Teleport. I, I posted teleport divine word and regenerate. 
I let, have to let the dog back out of the room now. Hang on. Oh, okay. yeah, okay. <laughs> so regenerate, you touch a creature and stimulate its natural, natural healing ability. It regains 4d8 plus 15 hit points. For the duration of the spell, it regains a hit point at the start of each of its turns. <clears throat> 10 hit points per minute. So basically, okay, here's, here's my first problem. Okay. Allowing somebody to just heal at will. Heal, 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 heal. That's a resource in, in D&D. Right. It needs to have a limit on how many times it can be done. Okay. That's why there are no healing cantrips, you know, yeah, stuff right. like that. Um, but this obviously is is a fucking god weapon. This is a, a or an item yeah. or whatever. Yep. This is like this a, is intended to yeah, be super something weapon. that's bestowed to somebody who's extremely right. powerful to begin with. Right. Um. The honestly, divine word. I'm not as hurt by that because no. it's really not super powerful until they're already at a point where you could breathe on them and they would die. Right. Um, I thought that that was power stuff. word kill, but it's not. It's like a slightly <laughs> reduced version of power word kill, basically. <clears throat> and teleport doesn't sound very powerful, but who knows? Te- being able to teleport without expending the resources is a pretty powerful ability, yeah. I would say. Um, but it may be but at a point in the you, game around not only there you, where... Um, you and up to eight willing creatures. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's like the party now no <laughs> longer has to worry about travel time or like... Right. If you're at that stage in the game where it's like, you know, drag, yeah, DBZ GT or something where everything's right. fucking crazy, then it's, you know, you can hand... Then items like this can work. Right. If your game's already broken, you can put games like <laughs> you can <put laughs> items like that in. But... Uh, that's the benefit yeah, like, of this, it, I think, is that it doesn't make you any more powerful, except that you can heal just like willy nilly. Okay, that's really powerful. It's, it's it is it is uh, it is definitely allows you to save a lot of your lower level spell slots that you might use on deafness and blindness or mm-hmm. cure light wounds or you know any of those things, um, misty step, and and use them use this 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 MacGuffin for that. Um, Saving the rest of your stuff for divine smites, or whatever. <laughs> yeah, right. I I would that uh the other I just yeah teleports you can abuse the crap out of that. Um, if you just have a place that you know that you can teleport back to with regularity, you don't have to, you know, spend the actions to heal. Uh, as I understand teleport anyway, as long as you're like intimately yeah. familiar with the location, you can pretty right. much just pop back and then just like hang out there for two turns and then come back. And then there's apparently a chance that you'll fuck up and is and it end up in okay. the middle of the ocean or something? I thought that that was I only how if familiar you, you are with the area. But that's what I was saying is if you it have a place with... that's like you know your sanctum or whatever. Mm-hmm. Or a bag would the have, inside of your right, bag of holes or something. <laughs> Does it have to be on those? The... Uh, I don't know. Because this is a lot of it's reading. The same plane of mm-hmm. existence. So but, it does have uh, to be the same plane of existence. Yes. But the only way that it's 100% doable is if you have like something installed. Either a teleportation circle mm-hmm. has been made, or there's an item that's linked to the spell or something that you link back, that you teleport back to. Even if you're very familiar, there's a 5% chance you'll fuck up. Um, there's a 25% chance that you'll fall off target. That's pretty significant then. Um, but I would say <coughs> if you're at the point where you've got this item, it would be pretty easy to put together a, a teleportation <laughs> circles. Okay. But, um, uh, but yeah, no, I, I think it could be a lot of fun. My first step to trying to get that into one of my games would probably be dropping a teleport off of <laughs> and then, uh, and then giving it a, a per short slash okay. long rest, uh, kind of thing or charges or something like that. All right. Um, so I've got another one here. All, All right. right. Let's hear it. Uh, as an act. Okay. So it's a wand that has, uh, we'll say. 10 charges. Um, you can, as an action, you can spend up to three charges to roll on a wild magic table three times. 
Okay. Yeah. And it recharges um, at the end of every rest. Watch, uh, watch him as he audibles in the charges. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. So it's not very powerful. <clears throat> okay. Um, if this is supposed to be given at the same time as the god robes here that you've right. described, um, it's it's definitely going to make the other person be like, he got what the, the ability to basically be yeah. Jesus, and I and I have the ability to to, to accidentally myself. shit myself, yeah, to cause to <laughs> cast know? fireball on myself on accident right. or turn into a plant. <laughs> no, they're they're unrelated. <laughs> okay. It is cool. Grow a beard of it is kind of neat, and it's a neat way to implement, uh, you know, a mechanic that exists for another rate, another class that's not being utilized. I wouldn't use it <clears throat> in a game that has a sort of wild magic sorcerer, right? Unless I was giving it to the wild magic sorcerer. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But in a game that has rogues and monks and and other, you know, not sorcerer people, this would be kind of cool. It so... should also give the ability to cast thaumaturgy. And prestidigitation, it will. <laughs> I okay. kind of like that. That's cute. Um, yeah. I think uh, I was going to say the other thing I might consider doing is uh, with a a wild magic uh, sorcerer, maybe give them the ability to move that uh, the result of their wild magic rolls by one oh. either direction or something. Oh, that'd be interesting. Yeah. Uh, just to mix that up i guess uh and uh and then if you were trying to keep it so that it could then still not just be like okay you do that more kind of thing i guess uh sort of like what i did with you and i'm pretty sure we're gonna be finding out that uh giving that to the yeah. diviner is gonna be oh, a really man. strong ability but Oof, yeah um pocket 20s next session mm. but i'm gonna laugh when you have to start a fight that you wouldn't have otherwise been in to use those 20s right, yeah. because that's oh, probably geez, what's gonna so happen it's gonna be a lot of fun the day the t old turtle burned down a village <laughs> you saw it in a dream it's um, camera yeah right that's the beginning of camera um, oh all right, God. interesting, interesting. Sorry, I, I, yeah. that that being much less powerful than the first magic item, I kind of expected, but uh, not so, not quite so weak that you'd staple more things onto it. Um, well, I don't. It doesn't. It's not beneficial outright. Really, you can't control okay. what it does um, when it, when you roll on that magic. table. Yeah, some, some of, of those, those magic uh, results are not great. Um, yeah, one of them is just cast fireball set right. on you kind of thing, or, you know, another's so, age some odd years. Uh, or I'm going to go through this this kind of table here that, of the MacGuffins that I built, um, and I want you guys to rate them. So that one that I told you there is is the first one, the, the cast, teleport, divine word, and regenerate, okay? So the next one uh, allows the wearer to cast stone skin, wall of stone, and flesh to stone as actions. Okay, I'm not familiar with two of those things. Um, what is what is the what is the second and third one? Uh, wall here, of stone. Yeah, uh, stone skin, and wall of stone, stone, and flesh to stone. Yeah, here I'll post it in the chat. The, the addition of flesh to stone there <laughs> makes me feel like you wanted this to create awful walls of fucking meat. <laughs> and, <laughs> Like, I don't understand that, I don't think. <laughs> Is there a contextual reason to include or? Okay, so this is just like a barrier of stone. That's kind of cool. Yeah, no, and it, uh, I was going to say the other two are really good stone. Stone. Um, They do, 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 do. I knew anything about 5e. Just stone to flesh. When you get to these higher level spells, I just don't know what they do. Um, you attempt to turn one creature you can see into stone. Okay, cool. It was um, it was stone to flesh, though, right? No, flesh to stone. Oh, okay. I'm a fool. <laughs> stone to flesh. <laughs> what you're oh, saying? <laughs> yeah, that's why just I was change, like, just make oh, apparently oh, misheard. Oh. That's oh, a thing, people. though, right? Is that not a thing? I swear, there's a. Does it let you go the other way? <laughs> I think there's an ability to do that. <laughs> I want a stone to flesh spell oh, now. <laughs> that is pretty neat. Thematically, it's very cool. It's very okay. Medusa. It's very earthbender. It you know, thing. no flesh to stone. I'm just dyslexic. <laughs> um, however, casting sixth level spells 
Um, asking actions. anything more than a third level spell is uh, at will. Yeah, is a big like, watch your damn self. You so know, it's, would it's you a thing you don't want to do. Would you say this is more or less powerful than the one that does teleport to Van Ward and regenerate? Well, objectively, those are all seventh level spells. Yeah. Right. This is like a this is like a third, a fifth, and a sixth level spell. Right. So I mean, it's it's less powerful, but okay. um, but it is. Uh, I think it has a little bit more like you can get uh, real cheap usability that, outside of combat. Like you can use walls of stone to make bridges. You can use right. wall of stone, mm-hmm. you know, to protect people against an exploding powder keg or you know something like that. Um, and run all things the you can't do with the other building one. businesses right out of right. town. Yeah, right. Just <laughs> the like other that. one is basically a cape that makes you Superman, and and this one is like. A cape that makes you an earthbender. Uh, okay, mm-hmm. all right. So here's here's another flesh one. Flesh to stone. Oh, stone to flesh. Stone to flesh is a three point five spell that existed, by the way. Oh, <laughs> I'm not making that bullshit. Gross. <laughs> um, all right. Here's stone another one. Allows the wearer to cast blade barrier, arcane sword, and shield as actions. Okay. Two shield as an action maybe. doesn't. You don't want to cast shield as a spell or as an action, I feel like. No, I think you typically want to use a reaction to cast spell. Because if you've casted shield on your turn and they know that, then they just won't attack you. The the shield's usually used as a reaction to uh like in response to being hit by or right. you know, being uh, or whatever. Yeah, being normally hit. So um you could still do that. Oh God! <laughs> I didn't like the um, tape engineering I did to try and keep the oh, flag no. uh, stuck to the wall yeah. back there. Didn't want to put like a thumbtack through it because I feel like that's bad. I don't know if that's right. bad or not. Though. No, that's totally against flag. If rope's code. still out there, um, he's probably really disappointed. It's not yeah. touching the ground. Okay. Okay. It's right. like propped up on blankets or uh, and blankets and pillows and stuff. Thankfully, <laughs> I'm gonna have to do something about that before uh, ink gets at the, at it though here in a minute. But um, I think that this is on par with the earthbender earthbender thingy that you had, and I think it was intended to be. You've got yeah. something that seems defensive. You got something offensive. You got something. Um, you know, it's it's kind of. Uh, Utilit utilitarian grot scarf that makes him super samurai. Right. Um, okay, so that's about the same as the 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 Earthbender one, right? I would um, say it's on about on the same level. Yeah. Okay, here's where it gets kind of nuts. Um, it allows the wearer to cast Storm of Vengeance, Earthquake, True Polymorph, and Incinerary Cloud as actions. These all sound like terrible high-level spells. They are all terrible <laughs> high-level spells. Just look up Storm of Vengeance by itself. Yeah. That that alone is crazy pants. Sounds like a palette. No, it's a druid spell. It's a ninth spell. level spell. It's a ninth so level you're... spell, so that's... Okay. That the so yeah, double the spell level to get to the character level that you have to be to cast it. <laughs> so even like twentieth level characters have one ninth level spell right. slot, right. and stuff like this typically. And I don't know much about. That's fair too, Avengers. though. Bags makes what? a good point. Uh, by the time you're level 18, 20 or whatever, where you'd be getting this item, action economy stops it from mattering a ton. Although if you can just crank off ninth level spells though, nah, like it, there's still resource management at that point, which I don't think, which you're getting to circumvent, I guess. I don't know. Right. I mean, stuff like this is like alter cities, right? You know, bring cities to the ground and to be able to stand there outside of combat and just be like, (laughs) doing, doing like storms every, every fucking six seconds is, is that's like a godly power. Right. 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 This is some shit that the red queen is wearing on her finger. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) All right. And then the last, Uh, I would never give this to a player 
until yeah, like and tree right polymorph as that well fight. is another one that's just right. going to yeah it's basically right. yeah, you can turn into anything which well yeah. but you can target other people with oh that that's too. also true yeah and yep. so you turn them into a rat and throw them into lava or something yep. and then they um <laughs> okay so here's the last one uh it allows the wearer to ca to cast prismatic wall dominate monster and anti-magic field as actions Yeah. I don't know any of uh, these. Prismatic Wall is is real, real, real good. Yeah. Uh, another ninth level, I think. Dominate nope. Monsters okay. up there. Because it's like Dominate Person only can target anything, mm -hmm. I think. Yep. And then Anti Magic Field is another really strong spell. Uh, yeah, because being able to just shut off magic is a really powerful ability as well. Which one would you say is better, the Storm of Vengeance, Earthquake, Truth, Polymorph, Cinerary Cloud, or the Prismatic? I'll take the one with the Animagic's field, because it okay. makes the others worthless. That's, that was kind I'd of the like point. To roll, I'd like to roll up these personal characters and just like... <laughs> and put put these, these on their heads. <laughs> right. <laughs> and just and, and duke, duke it out. I don't know, though. I mean, it depends on who would go first, you know? Right. Can I turn you into a goddamn mouse that can't cast spells out That's of it fair. yet? Or do you shut off magic so where we're we're just punching each other and having right. a slap fight? Right. Yeah, that's uh it kinda would be who goes first. Um I'd have to look at Earthquake again too. But these but. types of things are just gonna ruin a game. You that's know? I think so the other like thing is like unless that game's already yeah, like a like a uh after school spell cartoon um then <laughs> it's going to make it like one <laughs> um all right so here's one that's not part of that list of items thank you for for that information um it's called quicksilver armor um as an action you can choose a target that you can see and uh the armor gives you the same ac as that target Okay, like a like a target creature or target right. item. Target creature, like, like narrative. How yeah. does that? I had a curiosity. Well, it, it would just be like the, yeah, it morphs into, into the hide okay. or yeah. the armor right. of the That's target. Cool. That is that is pretty neat. Um, and you have to use an action to do it. Right. How long does it stick around? That's... Does it reset after a short rest? What is I... it in its dormant state? Yeah, it would probably be. Um, uh, yeah, this, that's a good point. Uh, probably be some kind of leather armor. Um, is it in its normal state? And then, uh, it would be yeah, it would reset after a short rest, or long rest, or mm. short rest. Short rest. So okay. you could use it multiple times in a day. You would be able to. I suppose though, times. you could have somebody in your party that's wearing plate, and you could just right, right. Boom, and get it. Yes. So you wouldn't really. Well, they could have a shield too, or you know, whatever. Right. I was gonna say, yeah, like what Bags is saying there. I think you could make it almost like a rage type thing. Like, uh, you get certain, you know, X per uh, day expenditures of it, um, and then, uh, and then, and then during that time, you get to set your AC oh, or, right. um. Or another cool concept might be just sort of a like chameleon suit. Like you do it once per day and it takes like 10 minutes or something. Uh, and it's not like a target, I but like it's like, that. okay, you can kind of yeah. like, it's sort of like a, a switchable set of armor or something too. But that's a different concept from what he's I like started like with, idea, I think. Though, because, because it, so what he had said, because you were not in the room. Right. Um, was the idea of maybe it being like a thing where it has like once per day, but you have to sit down and spend like 10 minutes oh, okay. making it do the thing. So you could, wouldn't be able to viably do it in combat, so, right? but you would be able to kind of set it to what you wanted. And it kind of, the benefit that would provide you, I think, would essentially be that it's, um, you could make it leather armor if you had time to do it before stealthing around. Right. Or you could make it, you know, plate armor 
in times where you wanted to get your shit rocked. That's and cool. Not have to be yeah. But that's not exactly what you were talking no. about as an armor. But no. I do think that like the uh, there's a way to make what you're talking about not that broken. Right. Um, I think uh, it's just you do have to find a way to limit it so that, yeah, the person who's walking around with like the big great sword uh, right. and no armor because he also he's like, a you know, barbarian or something uh, isn't just, yeah, like always also functioning at the best AC in the party's AC because uh, like if he's not getting hit and he's got rage and mm -hmm. he's got all the, you know, like then that's going to be hard for other players to um, keep up with. But it's I, I, I definitely think that there is like there's room for that to be really, really cool. Okay, I, mean, I don't know. think that it's I don't think it's broken in its current state. Right. I just think it's kinda gimmicky. Okay. You know? uh, yeah. Because every time you go into combat, you're just gonna look at your paladin and go Right. Whoop, okay, now I'm in play. Right. Um unless or you're gonna do it outside of combat and the action doesn't matter. Um, right. mm -hmm. or unless there's a play, party or an, an enemy that's wearing some kind of like oblivion, right? Human armor, yeah. or, you know, or whatever. In which well, case, guess, then you might do it in combat. Or if but you, you can only take do the shape of a particular armor. suit of armor or something, then you could make that. Maybe that's more. It's almost you know like uh like mutable in you know visibly as well. Like it looks now like whatever's targets you selected arm had, uh, armor would normally look like too then you could use it for some utility stuff outside of combat potentially <laughs> nobody's gonna reintroduce <laughs> spell failure bags it's not gonna happen <laughs> all right so uh here's another one um i haven't named them yet but uh they're boots with three charges um as an action uh, you can uh, three charges that re uh, regain with a one d four minus one uh, at the end of a long rest. You may spend one charge as an action within a thirty foot circle around or pick a terrain as an action in a thirty foot circle around you. The terrain becomes that type of terrain uh, for a minute. So like, uh, like, like environment wise, wonders, yeah, environment. Like... Yep. <laughs> it's, it's very age like of age of wonders yeah. like your your dude that walks around and turns everything to fire behind you. yeah oh yep. uh, that's kind of neat i don't know what it would do mechanically it's like when you're super um, good on uh fable <laughs> yeah right i don't know what it would do for you mechanically other than introduce you know um difficult terrain for yourself and everybody around you rangers just um, need to take environments that are useful oh my <laughs> god like <laughs> you're like oh, like, oh they're out of their <laughs> element <laughs> this is Christ. i'm saying like <clears throat> i guess you could make it like ice and then walk on water right, right? that would be hmm. kind of neat. but if you make it fire you're just gonna burn in it yeah, you know, if you if you're standing yeah. in your lava and you do it like so, I guess I was assuming more of yeah, just like a desert or I mean, yeah, like that kind of environment. Yeah. I didn't, I, I guess, or do you mean like rough terrain, or do you mean? Uh, more, I guess uh, like the original idea was the rough terrain penalties, like you can impose rough terrain in a in an area around you, uh, and favorable terrain, favored terrain kind of uh, bonuses that you can give um, your rangers, I guess. Uh, the bowling alley. <laughs> now I'm gonna have to make like Donnie the ranger. <laughs> it was just always out of his. Yeah. Okay. They're cool, but, but I wouldn't write anything in mechanically about them. Okay. I would leave it entirely um, up to player creativity and working with the DM to make okay. something neat utility. Interesting. That's, that's what I would use them for. Interesting. Yeah, it doesn't. That's not gonna be super powerful that i can see um it, it's uh yeah like i mean you're gonna be able to like grow yeah it's it's a pretty minor thing if you can alter like if you can turn the surround your surroundings into difficult terrain yeah that's it would pretty be a decent. 30 foot sphere around you too so like 30 foot up would also be the type of work? terrain that you've uh, you not breathe <laughs> anymore 
Well, no, no. <laughs> There's just like a tree branch just floating above your head. It it just like... immediately the air is now like dirt. Sand, yeah, no. <laughs> it's more of like the sphere that you're in turns into the type of weather or whatever that would be in that terrain as gotcha, well. Gotcha, okay. Oh, so like okay. Bags, sand, bags of sand, too. Yeah, that, that's that a good idea. Because you, yeah, you, got like a you could walk through bubble. like a tundra with, you know, a spring springtime planes around you they're mm. circle traveling with you but it only lasts for a minute and you only get three charges per long rest so it's not it's not something that would do you think i should take that off and allow just like at will um i would probably have so if i were going to put that on a pair of boots say... that would probably be an all the time thing okay. for the most part cool right um you, you would be something built into the boots i think it'd be like they would always make x happen you wouldn't be able to switch it change it anything like that and it would happen yeah. anytime they're being worn by somebody yeah. attuned to okay them, right so you would just oh like, put you on tune the to them and, and you pick a terrain and now you're in no they right. like have then, i would have oh, just probably either, either like either boots a, of the woodlands a, or something one. like gotcha. that okay gotcha, but gotcha they could sorry go ahead uh, either you. way though i think you could do it one or the other because it's going to take you a full long rest to change it so right um when you attune to it you pick a terrain um, or, or they were just, you know, made with that, you know, right, hard boiled right. into them. But, um, and when, then when you're wearing them, it, whoop, your little bubble shoots out and that's, that's how they would work in my, and that, that I think gives them like utility and travel gives them utility and, you know, going through the underdark or through a, a really hot right. cave, you know, whatever. Yeah. I think you do, um, I guess yeah. Then your 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 ranger is gonna say okay. Everybody yeah. Like that's what I was just gonna say is like the the moon or um whatever is like if you for were for some reason put into a vacuum or something like that. Is it it's producing air and stuff like that too? Uh, uh, if you're underwater, so. like yeah. are you producing air and stuff like that yep. for thirty? Yep. Okay, that's pretty good. I feel like that's just kind of like that's where the player creativity and DM right. No, yeah, and I mean that's that's one minute. I yeah, yeah. That, um, you can't like destroy the game. Yeah, no, three minutes in a day is is not a significant thing that you'll be able to do for any extended period of time. All right, so um, uh, this is another one. It's called the Armorator Sword. Um, whenever you make a melee attack against a, uh, enemy that has, uh, oh, oh, you can choose to make a melee attack at disadvantage against an enemy. If you, uh, hit with this sword, um, at disadvantage, you can reduce the enemy's AC by two, um, and it can stack. Okay. That's pretty strong. Um, I I don't think it's. I mean, you're foregoing damage, right? Yeah, uh, but they're. I mean, like fighters are gonna attack how many times in a turn? And you can slap that on. I uh, yeah. I wor I worry about um lasting. Uh, like if they last until the end of the or end of the wearer's next turn or the end of the wielder's next turn or something like that. Right. Um. Like they are, you know, they are allowed to stack, but they still go away at the end of the turn, kind of thing. I think you might be better off. Okay. Or I would, I would feel more comfortable as a DM. I guess is is a better way to put that. But um, uh, just yeah, just because if I were using that, I would just I'd be running around as a a fighter, just like donk 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 donk, mm -hmm. donk like playing WoW and just slapping you sunders could, on everybody. Like, you could just um cap it at what the armor would increase their AC by. Because the most you're going to get out of that is 8 on a player. Yeah, armor, that makes right? sense. Well, um, and, I, that's the problem there, though, is technically it's just their base AC, right? Like, it's not a 10 plus number. Right. Uh, that's not how 5e works. Yeah. It's just like your AC it's is 18. AC, yeah. I mean, you could make a little chart and put in there. Yeah, says, no, that wouldn't. You know, plate armor has a at max 8. You know, leather has 1. You know, the Fucking that's true yeah, yeah. I think well, you but could, there's uh, like natural uh, armor or, too or whatever it is yeah but those are still like those are the base uh mm -hmm. like your your base ac starts at 13 plus whatever 
Um, so you could argue that that could still go down all the way to zero at least and just leave you with your uh, your deck <laughs> flat-footed. Oh. Well, we I can't think, turn you know, it into 3.5 again. <laughs> somebody, I've been trying. It doesn't work. Somebody wearing no, I mean, somebody wearing no armor could have 10 plus their decks. Mm-hmm. So if you could hit them fucking 20 times, but I still feel like they could choose their no armor plus decks over the armor that they're wearing. Uh, you know, okay. Like you would with a monk or, you know, having multiple that makes some sense. AC benefits. Okay. I see what you mean there. Interesting. That's a reasonable but, way to handle that. I would well, probably, I don't... like what, what Bags is saying, I would probably just say make oh. it an action or a bonus yeah. action that you can take with the attack action. Um, Interesting. Okay. And then uh, so that and then only let it apply once per turn. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's not bad. You know, when you make an attack, you can use a bonus action to um, do this. To blah 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 blah. Right. Okay. All right. But with that, let's take a break. Break time. Um, Mm -hmm. And then we'll come back and we'll we'll probably just keep talking about magic items tonight. Yeah. We don't have a whole lot of time left. And maybe we'll talk about races. We can answer. Yeah. And I think there's been a couple new ones in the Discord, too. Yeah, uh, yeah that's how I was saying. The past, yeah. last 15 minutes or whatever. So cool. we'll be back in like 10 minutes. Um, I guess I'll do the thing. Hold on. <laughs> do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. I'm going to start fixing the flag now. Fix the flag. Um, if you guys like what we're doing, um, down below, there's the Discord channel. You can join there and hang out with us. We, we have a community of people who run games and, and, and play games and play some video games and um, there's a West Marches game that is run there. Um, come hang out with us. Be our friends. Um, we do a bi-weekly podcast that is put out every Friday. Tomorrow, or not every Friday, every other Friday. Tomorrow is um, we're putting out this week's episode. Um, surprise, surprise. It's a stories of Paralandia. Um, we it's it's like a spin-off thing of some of the, the stories of some of the characters within the uh, within the party talking, basically telling stories to each other. Um, but um, other than that, we do this every Thursday and every other Monday, which I think next Monday would be the Monday for that. Um, is Gods of Aether, which is a game that Kyle West and our server runs, and. Uh, um, What's the what's the story with the vault? Uh, that is happening in two weeks. We are spending a little bit of downtime to make sure we get ahead on maps for the parties okay. that are run through it. Um, so. And that's that's a that's a community game that the community can join and play in. Um, and it's sort of like a Dark Souls esque dungeon crawl, mega dungeon thing. Yeah. Um, outside of that, we have a store on our website where we sell uh, um, t shirts and, and sweatshirts and dice. You should hop over there and spend some spend some of your hard earned cash on that. And if you want to if you want to um, support us, just by being a, a friendly, awesome person, um, we have a Patreon, um, and you can support us there. There's um, different goals and things that you get for being on those tiers and yes. other buzzwords. Um, and All right, that's about it. All right, so we'll see y'all in ten minutes. Ten minutes. Bye. Welcome, weary travelers, to Snakeskin Brothels. Come, let our delectable experts rub away the tension of that overbearing dungeon master or that subtly racist murder hobo party member. Our staff are specially trained to make you focus on the one thing that really matters, pleasure. Whether you take a long rest here or simply need to take a load off, let Snakeskin Brothels deliver. It doesn't matter if you're a high elf or a tiefling with family in the third ring of hell. We'll service all your needs. Remember, what happens in the snakeskin stays in the snakeskin. So come, shed your worries and slip into snakeskin, where your pleasure is our business and no one else's. Located in Cornucopia, along Seven Cragen Way. And we're back. Hello, everybody. Oh, God, Brett, that's terrifying. Don't do that. Do that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, yeah, we are going to do some questions from last week. 
now here in the last 20 or so minutes that we have. We're going to start with... And then I'll, I'll leave you all on a request. Ooh. Um, nice. So we'll yeah. when we get done with all this stuff here. All right. So stick around till the very for, end. For Shady's request. Yeah. Can you do that thing with your tongue that I like? Yeah, I can. Uh, all right. So I Luck asked. So good. Do you guys find it hard to turn off your? Or do you guys find it hard to turn your DM caps off when you're just role playing? I have a big problem with this actually, uh, and it sometimes makes me. Uh, not pay attention in campaigns as well as I should because I am not... Well, I guess it's the opposite, I suppose. I actually have trouble, like, taking the campaign as seriously if I'm not the DM, and so I kind of clock out way easier than I would if I was the DM. Um, there is a little bit of that, I would have done this differently, but it's more of, oh shit, I should be paying attention to this. This isn't like a side character thing they don't have to be paying attention to and then trying to play catch up a little bit so no it's actually pretty easy for me to keep the dm hat off and in fact it's maybe beneficial if i keep it on a little bit more a little closer to the head what about you guys i mostly just compare myself to people <laughs> which is like probably a, like a not a, a super healthy thing but <clears throat> No, I, I, you know, it's like if I'm running with, if I'm, if I'm playing with somebody who's like really good DM, I, I sit there and, and, and wonder like, how the fuck they do that? Like, I, how would I do this in this situation? And I get kind of lost in those, those like little, um, like self conscious thoughts or whatever. Um, but then at the same time, if I'm with somebody who's like a much, you know, less experienced DM, then I sit there and just kind of like stew over, how I would have handled things differently, you know. <laughs> so I'm I'm a really bad player, is what it comes down to. So I started as a really bad player, as a rules lawyer as fuck, and three point five <laughs> rules lawyer. So like Ooh. that turned into me being a, a DM that works that way. It, like I feel like that has more influence on how I DM than how I DM has an influence on how I play. Ink, leave the damn flag alone. <laughs> <laughs> anyway but but i yeah so i think that that's um i think that my sort of penchant for following the rules as they're written is is an issue when i'm either a dm or a player sometimes it's just i'm not in charge when i'm a player so it becomes more <laughs> disruptive sometimes uh and i am yeah i'm very ready to say well actually it works this way as the uh, rules are written right. which mm -hmm. Maybe how many times you know, you've stabbed the party in the back? Oh my god, yeah, it's not like I'm <laughs> doing rules. it for my benefit either. That's the best part. Is it's like, oh no, it shouldn't be that easy, it should actually cause this way this, harder. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nine times out of ten, too, not even for a benefit. So, I, uh, yeah, it's tough, but it's not, um, I guess for me, yeah, it's uh, it, it goes the other way more so, I think. Okay, all right. So the next question from Zekafer here is, uh, what are some good questions to ask, new, to ask new players to help encourage character building? Um, I think that uh, some good questions, one of my favorite ways of going about it is, so imagine that your character is at a convention for people like them. So if they're like a ranger or a fighter, imagine that they're in the fighter convention. You know, so you got a bunch of dudes wearing swords and walking around, you know, who are, who are fighters. What makes your character different from all the other people at that fighter convention? If you can't come up with anything, or if your player has trouble coming up with things, then then that's where you need to, like, poke at them. Because, you know, if it's a fighter convention, all the tropes are going to be on display, and you're looking to try to help them make them more individualized than just the dude with the sword, the dude with the magic staff. Um, that's one of my favorite questions because it kind of gets people thinking, oh, yeah, okay, so I'm not looking to be different from the party. I'm looking to be different from my class or, like, the race that I've picked because if that's the case, then the party is going to be different anyway. Yeah. Right. What about you guys? You got any good questions? I typically will ask just what is your drive? What is the thing that makes your character want to leave home and adventure? You know, and, and sometimes it's super tropey, but 
the tropes exist because because they're you know common themes um and it kind of helps them get behind like why is my character doing this not what is my character doing but why is he doing it um you know beyond that there's like the well i'll leave it for eric because i know he'll i think i know what he's gonna say <laughs> what about you eric i uh, the, the the daggers uh that um yep we usually use yeah that's um i was i thought that's what you were gonna say so i was like damn he went first i'm not gonna have any <laughs> but uh but no it's yeah so you kind of yeah get them try the the goal is ask them stuff about how they're connected to the setting um and and i if if that's like you know so who are you connected to uh what is your character regret what's a short-term goal what's a long-term goal so you, you try and set up relationships positive or negative um uh like you know things that your character wishes they had done differently uh which can you know result in sort of a long-term drive thing potentially or or tie into your 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 longer term goals um and the uh uh and then yeah you, you want something that that they're trying to accomplish this session and uh something that they're trying to accomplish over the campaign right um that's that's the the gist of it i also nice. if it's the first session i'll ask like why are you here specifically right. like in the town that we're I starting in play or... D &D. I, I don't know. <laughs> oh, why are you here, here? Yeah. <laughs> but no uh yeah <laughs> what's your character doing that brings them to right. this place from wherever they would normally be yeah exactly um all right yeah so those are very good very good questions to ask people to get them interested um, so Dallas here asks, how do you feel comfortable and confident in your ability to actually run a game and be a DM, especially with people you've never really played with before? This is more of a, uh, there is no real right or wrong answer. This is just what we do. Um, I just have an overflowing abundance of unearned confidence that I just spout uh, whenever I'm in a situation that I feel either overwhelmed or um you know a little bit scared about i just try to pretend that i know more than the group of people that i'm in and it mostly works for me uh it just it's all about the tone of your voice if you sound like you know what you're talking to 70 percent of the time every time people are going to listen to you because you're the one who sounds like they know what they're talking about um but in all seriousness it's mostly like uh, experience you know i've been running games for for a long, long time. And so there is a certain like mindset that I put myself in when I sit down to, to run a game. There's a certain amount of like things I expect people to bring to the table if they want to role play that even if I've never met them before, if they don't like show me that they're bringing those things, I'll ask them to leave or I, I won't have them in the game. Or if, you know, they're, if I know them, then I know they're going to bring those things. But yeah, it's it's just it's mostly the utter confidence thing. It just you just gotta fake it until you make it. What about you guys? I basically just don't have confidence unless it's with people I'm super thing. familiar with. <laughs> oh, nice, good for you. Um, <laughs> um, I I don't know. I I feel like um, you know in 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 the community that I run games in, um, you know we're we're sort of like being like the leaders of the community, there's a certain expectation that we're like really good, right? And <laughs> and so then I, I kind of like have this shadow of that over me and it, it kind of makes like running for people that, because I run a very specific kind of game and otherwise I'm not super great. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's gotta be something that's very player driven and uh, and uh, I'm, not, I'm not super great with people who are more interested in sitting back and just experiencing the game mm -hmm. um so i run into more than once running into a party that is more like that and then i'm like a fish in water you know <laughs> um so that kind of no fish out of water i don't i don't get too like racked up over i don't pace in my living room before the session <laughs> well you gotta come but, at me <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> but i do i do definitely fret over it for about the week before the oh. session starts yeah, I um, 
Yeah, I was gonna say. So, how do you Ooh, feel confident away. and comfortable? <laughs> it's like uh, I don't. <laughs> so and like, but but like Aaron is also saying, I would say you just you fake it till you make it. It's all in the tone of voice. It's like every other aspect of life. <laughs> if you project confidence, people will buy it most yep. of the time. So uh, just try and do what you can, and uh, and and expect that. I uh, well, I, I would also recommend that you don't play with people who don't know that you're trying your best. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. And uh, if, if that's not good enough, then, Get another party. you know, find a party yeah. that is going to work with you while you develop your skills and get more comfortable because it's just it's not fair to expect right. too much too fast, I guess. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. One... Also... Oh, yeah. Go on. Also, um pacing in your living room before the session helps Aaron <laughs> helps me so I've heard. <laughs> I mean, it, well no it doesn't help it just you know it's a necessary part of the process i i guess i'm a little bit i'm, I'm different from you guys i i don't i don't get that anxiety before being a dm uh it's it's uh i i don't know why i don't um, but yeah, I don't, I don't have that anxiety. So maybe I'm not a good person to ask about how to, how to avoid having anxiety. I don't know, dude. Just don't, don't have it. Don't, you know? <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> just stop. Well, and I, and I don't, I don't get it with, with people that I'm like super familiar with, right? I just get it with like new folks. Oh, it's so much worse. You know, and then those new folks either people become people well. I'm familiar with or, or don't stick around. So it's like, it's just like that first few sessions that really is kind of rough, you know, because you don't know what to expect. Yeah. See, it's like, you know, people I don't know, it's easier because I know I'll be I'm like middle of the pack ish a little maybe, you know, like I, I played with DMs that are way worse than me and <laughs> DMs that are way better than me. So I'm like in there somewhere uh, with, you know, what you'd expect for it out of a DM. So I, I think it's like, yeah, like it's just tougher to with people that I, you know, do know or, or yeah, DMs that I really enjoy playing with and stuff. Uh, whichever side Karen's on. Not that I don't enjoy playing with Shady. I just, you know, I don't think I've ever played in a game in a session of year or a game of yours that lasted more than three sessions. Uh, well, fuck you, bud. Yeah. I don't really know if Shady's comment. ever played in a game of yours that lasted longer than three sessions. Everybody's got, everybody's got a, a, a problem, thing, right? Yep. I mean, oh, no. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You just got to own it. Yep. <laughs> See, with, with Sometimes my... my games don't even start. Uh, with, so think about that. With my lack of <laughs> having on the other side of the bell curve, uh, with my lack of having uh, uh, anxiety and my utter confidence, a lot of people at times will be like, "Oh, I have an hour before I have to run that game." Shit. All right. Uh, this is gonna happen this time, and I just kind of, kind of wing it. And sometimes I feel really guilty about that because then I go back and I think about it. And I was like, "Oh, I could have done that, and it would have been so much cooler." But I wasn't thinking about it until an hour before the thing started, and I was like, "Oops, okay." And that happens to me, and I spend at least the hour before usually pacing around in my room beforehand, thinking about how you know the eight umpteen different, you know, million ways I could handle the thing, and and you still end yep. up with the four that they consider were not on your list. So it's like, well, shit. Yep. <laughs> All right, so we have one more question, and then it's time for us to go. Goose asks, how do you run a session without any combat but still keep the player's interest? How do you keep everyone involved? And then this question comes after listening to Dragons, apparently, in the episode five. Which one's four? Uh, I don't remember. Uh, let me look up really quick. It's like right before we split off to go to the yep. town, I think. I'm not sure. Is it the Finch flinch? Uh, it might be. It, it might be Finch Flint. Yeah, as we sit here on this Art of lovely... Door. No, episode is five is Art oh, of Door. Oh, it's yeah. where we made the door. It's where yeah. everyone made well, the door. Fucking make them make a door, obviously. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> fucking force them into making a door. That's how. Uh, uh, no, I think for generally, I think actually, honestly, in my opinion, um, with certain groups, I have, I have like two very distinct camps. Certain groups are more involved during roleplay sessions and like they they get like more into the session when there's heavy roleplay and then some groups are much more involved when there is combat and they like everyone is talking and doing stuff when there's combat um so you know it's it's like 
kind of a balancing act, I suppose, or you have to really know your party to really know when they're going to be the most active. And as for, like, Dragon's Paralandia, I, I just have to be like, okay, uh, you four are in a goddamn room. It's got walls, and this is going on inside of it. And you guys will spend 45 minutes acting out your characters. So it's not very <laughs> hard. With, with me, like, poking Veros in the chin. <laughs> And yeah. saying something rude to him, and then and exactly. then and then everybody just riffs off each other for yep. an hour. So that's that. <coughs> uh, you know, that's so. an extreme. I, there, I don't run another game. I run like six <laughs> games, now, and I don't run another game with with a group that quite attaches themselves to role play that much. But yeah, and and as for keeping everyone involved, the way I do it is I kind of have an internal timer running in my head for when was last time this person talked. And if it's been like a long period of time and they're not a role player who's like a, you know, back shadow role player who wants to just observe and just take part whenever they're on the spot. But if they're one of those people that I think is like trying to get a word in, I will make space for them. Um, and like either by mechanically doing that, like as an NPC turns them and asks their character a certain question right. or by just like stepping in and going, okay, it's been a long time since we heard from so-and-so we should what are you doing um but yeah what about you guys um i, I, I agree mostly ahead. with this oh go ahead no i already okay, said it go. you can't just, do that just say your i damn already thing. did that's not fair <laughs> damn it all okay, right fine Suck! i i agree <laughs> <laughs> we killed him we finally killed him <laughs> i'm done <laughs> Uh, I agree with with basically what what Kyron is saying on the fact that <clears throat> you know there's groups that attach to role play there's groups that attach to combat it's just it comes down to like recognizing what your group is and a lot of that mm -hmm. can be done before the first session you know you can really sit down in a session 0 or even in a pre -cam pre campaign questionnaire and determine what the players are going to want so that you can sort of like figure out what to play right um I would say you, Goose, if you are listening or are out there, um, if you are having an issue with your players not being interested in your story or your game, then you're, 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 you need to step back a second and look at what the players are interested in and tailor that game for them. If they don't want RP, don't give them RP. Right. You know, if they if they don't want combat, then don't give them combat. You know, right. sometimes those things are going to be necessary to move the story forward. Yeah. But, you know, you got to tailor the game to the players. And if you're not enjoying it the way that they want to play it, then there's a disconnect, you know. And, and I don't know what the, you know, whether you sit down and talk to them and say, you know, this game isn't fun for me. Or um, do you guys, you know, are you guys not interested in any of the RP or, or whatever? Um, right. Or find a new fucking group, you yeah, know, exactly. whatever, you know, some I mean, way to make it to where everybody's having. That's what it comes down to. Yeah, it's like that's there. There are groups that that's just not the kind of D and D they're looking to play. Right. Um, but I will say, you can also facilitate it by doing stuff like what Kyron is saying. You can directly address players who don't seem to be engaged. Uh, you know, and 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 then you can at least figure out if it's through, you know, just because they don't feel comfortable inserting themselves or interjecting, or if it's because they just, you know don't feel comfortable yeah ex yes talking and whatever in in front of the group that's a thing for some people too and uh and it takes a while to get over that but if but you can kind of slowly start to draw people out of the shell with that um or uh you know you can figure out if that's you know it's just a group that prefers you know that they light up when you're in combat like mm -hmm. like like saying it's it, it's about uh Finding what kind of D and D is enjoyable for your party, and figuring out what kind of D and D is enjoyable for you, and then meeting in the middle somewhere, and and hoping that everybody's still having a good time. Yeah, that's an excellent way place to end on. Then, just make sure everyone no, is having a good time. I hope that everybody is having a terrible time. No, don't. No, this is a bad time. Play the game that makes you right. cry and go sleep at night. That's a request. No, um, <laughs> next week, um, we're going to talk about building races, yeah. um, at least for a portion of it. I wanted to um, <clears throat> try and do some actual race building. Um, so, that being said, 
Um, I want you, community and and friends, to um, put ideas for races that you'd like to see built in questions for next class under the table 13. The world that we're building them for is essentially a sort of post-apocalyptic ancient magic world called uh, Terminal. And uh, it's it's a bunch of different, um, basically a bunch of people that, that utilize technology that was kind of like a Magitek thing that sort of turned on them and, and destroyed them. And I want some really cool, interesting like races and what you think they yeah. would would be about. And we'll sit down next time um, among those and, and others that we bring in and, and build them and see what uh, see what we come up with. But other than that, you know the things we do. Um, you know where we do them. Patreon. Yep. Discord. Yep. Podcasts. Yep. Other Twitch streams. Yep. Check, Check them it all out. out. Join the Discord community. Look at our stream schedule on our website and buy some, buy some dice, man. Be part of the movement. Some dice. Sweet shirts or something. Give me a reason. None to leave of us the are house. wearing any of the merch. Right. We yep. are bad at this. Yep. <laughs> it was all dirty. Everybody wear give Kyron so a reason to ship stuff out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, that was an excellent table 13. Thank you very much for joining us, and we will see you all next week. Goodbye. Peace out.